Okay, we're going to read chapter five of Because of the Rabbits by Cynthia Lord. But let's talk about chapter four first. Um, the name of the chapter is Most Rabbits Are Happiest in Bonded Pairs or Groups. And um, remember, she jumps out of bed. Um, she's going to school and, um, she takes one of her special rocks with her. I think the one she put in her pocket is, uh, said, you got this. <clears throat> she brings her the, um, bunny downstairs and has her dad promise to wait until she gets home to, um, take it to the rescue place and um, her brother uh, gives her a rock and it says B on one side and then when she gets to school she looks at it and it says yourself which is very nice of him okay so this chapter 5 is called um, rabbits are naturally curious once comfortable with their nearby environment They'll want to explore beyond it. Beyond it, That means they're curious. <clears throat> okay. My heart bounced inside me as I was carried along in the river of kids going down the hallway. Lakeview Elementary School looked different than it did when Mom and I visited last summer. The halls had been empty then with only a few things on the walls. Now there were bright colors everywhere and kids seem to fill every available space, all talking at once. Don't trip or you'll be a goner, I thought, as I made my way past each decorated classroom door. Our new pack, said one door, with kids' names written in construction paper crayons. Second grade is sweet, said another, with names of cupca on cupcake shapes. Emma, a voice said, is that you? I turned and smiled. Even though she was younger than me, Shona, and I had been in homeschool group together two years ago. It was so nice to see someone I knew that I wanted to hug Shona, except there were too many kids in the way. Hi, I'm going to public school this year, I said. I can't believe you're here, Shona said. Who's your teacher? Ms. Hutton. Come on, I'll take you there. Shona hoisted her yellow backpack onto her shoulder and walked confidently around kids down the hallway. It felt weird to follow someone younger than me, especially since the little kids had followed me in the homeschool group, but it was a relief not to do this alone. Shona paused at a door near the end of the hallway. This is it. The door was decorated like a tree with construction paper owls and the words, look who's in fifth grade. Emma was on a cute blue owl with big eyes outlined in green. Yes, this was really happening. Thanks, Shona, I said, but she was already being swallowed up by the crowd of kids in the hall. Stepping inside the room felt like coming downstairs on Christmas morning. The big whiteboard was outlined in stars and someone had written on it, Welcome, fifth graders! It seemed like everywhere I turned, there were so many exciting things. Colorful paper lanterns hung from the ceiling and there were leafy plants on the windowsill. Between the big windows were bookcases full of books. I recognized some of my favorites displayed on the top. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Smile, The One and Only Ivan, and Because of Winn-Dixie. It was comforting to see them like I already had a few friends in the room. Over in the corner, a plastic toy chest held a jumble of playground equipment. One ball had the words Hutton Kickball on it. I'd heard of kickball, but I'd never played it before. Maybe I could look up the rules online when I got home. The, desk, the desks were pushed together into groups of four. Every desk had a new pencil and a name tag on it. I found Emma right away and put my backpack on the chair. My own desk. I'd be sitting next to Jack and across from Leah and Iris. I practiced their names in my head. Jack, Leah, Iris. Jack, Leah, Iris. We all had four letters in our names. That seemed like a good sign. 
I opened my backpack and pretended to be busy while the other kids were milling around. Everyone, please put your name tag put on your name tag and gather on the rug, Miss said Mrs. Hutton. She had chin length blonde hair and wore a pretty gray skirt with a white sweater and a chunky orange necklace. I took off my jacket and stuck Emma on my shirt, careful not to cover up the golden retriever. Sitting on the rug with the other kids, I wiggled my toes inside my sneakers to keep the rest of me still. I couldn't believe I was really here. Excited had turned on a burst of speed, leaving scared coughing in the dust. Maybe one of the kids was my future best friend. I smiled so I'd look friendly in case anyone looked at me. A few girls wore dresses and skirts, but others were in jeans like me. A girl with long brown hair in a ponytail was twirling her necklace around her finger. A blonde girl with glasses had her pen with her. I hoped I hadn't made a mistake by leaving mine in my backpack. Fifth graders came in more sizes than I expected. I was relieved to see I was in the middle, not the biggest or the tallest or the shortest either. No other girls had red hair, but one boy did. His hair was blonder than mine, but still, it was nice not to be the only one. Welcome to your last year of elementary school, Mrs. Hutton said. The kids cheered, so I did too. Let me start by telling you a little about myself, Mrs. Hutton smiled, but I'll do it in a fun way. It's a game called Two Truths and a Lie, where I'll tell you three things, but only two of them are true. When I'm done, you'll guess which one is a lie. My teacher was going to lie? I looked around to see if anyone else thought that was shocking. The other kids were smiling. My family likes to hike in the White Mountains, Mrs. Hutton said. I have a pet cat named Sirius Black from my son's favorite book series, Harry Potter, all right? And I've never been downhill skiing. Never been skiing? That had to be the lie. We were surrounded by mountains and ski areas. As I repeat them, raise your hand for the one you think is the lie, Mrs. Hutton said. I raised my hand for the skiing statement along with almost everyone else. Now I'll reveal the answers. Mrs. Hutton held up a frame, big frame photo of her with her husband and two teenage kids on a mountaintop with layers of blue and purple mountains in the background. My family loves to hike, so that statement is true. She said, here we are at the top of Mount Washington in July. Dad would approve of their hiking boots and poles. I couldn't wait to tell her that I like to hike too. She picked up another photo and turned it around to show us a little dog. This is our dog, Baxter. Wait, what? Baxter wasn't the name and she said she had a cat. You've never been skiing? I asked loudly. The whole class looked at me. That's right, Emma, Mrs. Hutton said. But let's remember to raise your hand when you want to say something, okay? I felt my face burning red. I had certainly seen school kids on TV raise their hands, but I never had to do that myself, and I didn't like being in trouble. I've never been downhill skiing because I lived in Georgia for most of my life, Mrs. Hutton explained. Ms. Hutton explained. In fact, before we moved here five years ago, I'd only ever been to the snow. I've only seen the snow a few times. Miss Hutton smiled. Another true thing about me is that I've been a teacher for 12 years and I have to admit that fifth grade is my favorite grade to teach. Fifth graders are independent, they have great sense of humor, and are wonderful problem solvers. They are compassionate and care deeply about things. I lifted my head higher with each nice thing Miss Hutton said. And this is Ms. Martell. She'll be helping out uh, sometime uh, some of the time, some of, sometimes during the day. I looked behind me to see another woman. She was younger than Ms. Hutton with brown hair and lots of freckles. She waved too. I waved back. No one else did, so I put my hand down fast. I know we'll have a great year together, Ms. Hutton continued. Now I want you to get to know each other. So find your seats and I'll tell you what we're going to do next. At our group of desks, the other three kids immediately started unpacking their backpacks, so I opened mine and took out my assignment notebook and a cute panda eraser. I wanted to be ready as soon as Ms. Hutton started telling us what we needed to do. 
Suddenly it felt weird that this was real. I'd been imagining and thinking about today for so long that the waiting part seemed to go on forever and the real part was coming too fast. I touched my pocket to feel the bump of the two rocks. You've got this and be yourself. Hi, I'm Emma, I said to the kids around me, giving my friend Leah's but not crazy big smile. I'm new here. Leah and Iris said hi back. They both looked nice. Leah had short blonde hair and wore bright blue glasses. Iris's brown hair was held back with a green headband. Where did you come from? Iris asked. I'm new to this school, I said, but I've lived on Moose Alley my whole life. Oh, Leah said, how do you like it here compared to your old school? I didn't want to tell them I'd been homeschooled just yet. In books and movies, homeschool kids are usually super quirky. I didn't want them to expect me to be like that. Owen had said other kids don't give you too many chances. I like it so far, I, I said instead. It's a golden retriever, Jack said, looking at my shirt. His hands were on his thighs, but his fingers were twitching like a secret wave. I have two goldens at home, I said, glad to change the subject. Do you have any? But Miss Hutton clapped her hands to get our attention. Okay, now that you've had a minute to get settled, you are going to play the two truths and a lie game with your seatmates. Remember to come up with two true things that the other kids in your group won't already know about you and one lie. I'll give you some time to think and then we'll play the game. Iris and Leah and Jack barely knew anything about me, so that part would be easy. I opened my new notebook to write down my statements. The truth seemed easier. I'd already mentioned my dogs. I could tell them about Lappy, but he wasn't mine to keep and I didn't want to explain that. So I wrote, we once had a beaver in our barn. That was true and seemed different enough that the other kids might not believe it. I've hatched frogs in our bathroom at home. It was a homeschool science project, but I didn't have to tell that part. Most kids like animals, so they might find that interesting. And now the lie, I love dill pickles. When my family eats out at a restaurant and they put a pickle on my plate, I always give it to mom. Iris went first, I'm afraid of elevators. When I was six, I broke my wrist falling out of a tree I'm allergic to tomatoes. Leah rolled her eyes. That's too easy for me. Emma and Jack can guess. Tomatoes give you hives, Jack said. Last year, you had to go to the emergency room during lunch. As the new kid, I could see I was at a big disadvantage in this game. Iris huffed. You're supposed to guess the lie, Jack. I think the lie is elevators, I said. Emma's right, Iris said. I actually love elevators, especially the ones that have glass sides so that you can see out as you're going up. Climbing stairs is so boring, and I r did really break my wrist when I was six. In fact, I still have the cast. Your turn, Leah. I had a hard time thinking of things you wouldn't know, she said to Iris. Then she smiled at me. Iris and I have known each other since we were babies. Leah and Iris acted like a team already. That was exactly what I missed with Owen and what I wanted again. Leah cleared her throat. I stepped on a bee this summer. I'm a vegetarian. My toenails have green polish on them. She smiled. And don't bother looking because I'm wearing sneakers. Was it a wasp? Jack asked. I don't know, but if that's your guess, you're wrong, Leah said. I did step on a bee and it hurt so much that I didn't look to see what kind it was. Wasps can sting more than once, Jack said. Social wasps give off a chemical when, treat, when threatened that tells the rest of the colony to attack. If Jack remember to stay on topic, a voice said. I turned to see Miss Martell making a spinning motion with her finger. Move on, she said quietly to Jack. Jack closed his mouth. Remember, you can write yourself some cue cards if you need to help if you need help staying focused. Ms. Martell said and walked over to the next set of desks. I was pretty sure Jack had some special needs. I had met kids with special needs before because that's one reason kids sometimes get homeschooled. I was wondering what else Jack was going to say about wasps, though we get them around our apple trees a lot 
And as dad says, the better you understand an animal, the easier it is to keep you both safe. Um, is the lie about nail polish? I asked. Yes, Leah said. I'm wearing hot pink. You're a vegetarian? Iris asked. Since when? Since about a month ago, Leah said. But I've wanted to for a long time. Iris looked shocked. Maybe they weren't as close as I had thought. Best friends would probably know you'd changed to be a vegetarian. Or maybe they had been best friends when they were little, but were just regular friends now. And each open to a new best friend? Your turn, Emma, Leah said. I didn't want to read my statements in order, so I started with the lie. I love pickles. I've hatched frogs in our bathroom at home. We once had a beaver in our barn. The beaver, definitely, Iris said. That's just weird. It's weird enough to be true, Leah said. I'm guessing frogs. Frogs in the bathroom is disgusting, Iris said. Ugh, can you imagine slimy frog eggs right next to where you brush your teeth? Leah shivered, and I felt the smile slipping off my face. I hadn't kept the frog eggs in the sink. They were in a glass bowl on a shelf. Mom wanted them in a place where I could wash my hands easily after changing their water. Pickles, Jack said. I opened my mouth to say yes, but the word got stuck in my throat. The beaver is true, I said, giving myself a moment to think. My dad's a game warden, and the beaver was one that he rescued. It was in a cage in our barn overnight because the rehab center wasn't open yet. Okay, that's not weird. It's great, Leah said. What's the lie? I hesitated. It was just a game, a small thing, and really, what would it matter? I'd be with these kids every day for a whole year. I needed to get off to a good start. I didn't want them to think I was weird or worse, disgusting. The frogs, I said. I knew it, Iris said. No one would keep slimy frog eggs in their bathroom. I would, Jack said. I forced a smile. At least someone was on my side. I don't like pickles, Leah said. So if I get one, you can have it, Emma. Okay, Jack, your turn. I learned to read when I was three years old. I like Legos. I don't like animals. That's too easy, Iris said. You always talk about animals, so the lie is that you don't like them. You win, Jack said. You learned to read when you were three? I asked. That's amazing. Dr. Seuss's ABCs was my first book, Jack said. Big A, little A. Mrs. Hutton clapped her hands. Did you find out some fun things about each other? Now we're going to take that activity and make it bigger. It will be your first fifth grade assignment. I opened my assignment notebook to today's date, which I had outlined in purple letters. You'll work in your groups of four. Each group will prepare a short presentation introducing us to everyone in your group using two truths and a lie. Our presenta on presentation day, you will introduce us to your seatmates by telling us three things about them, but only two of them will be true. The, the class will guess the lie. Is there a prize if we guess right? A boy asked. Mrs. Hutton smiled. The prize will be getting to know your classmates. Oh, the boy said. I was hoping for chocolate. Finally, you'll reveal the answers, Miss Hutton said. Please bring some props or pictures with you, just like I did with my photo of my family hiking. I've saved one bulletin board and a big table that we can use to dis display things. I looked where she pointed. The bulletin board said, Ms. Hutton's fabulous fifth graders, surrounded with owls with our names on them, just like the classroom door. Your groups will present to the class on Friday, Miss Hutton said. It'll be a fun way for us to wrap up our first week together. Any questions? Iris uh, raised a hand. Can we make a video of our presentation? Some of the things I want to show are too big to bring it into school. Miss Hutton hesitated, but then she said, sure, be creative as long as it follows the format of two truths and a lie. Iris leaned across her desk to whisper to Leah. Jack and me. Video is easier than doing it in person. Leah, you and I can say the statements about each other. Jack and Emma can work together too. Then we'll just put it all together at the end. It'll save us a lot of time. Sounds good, Leah said. Wait, what? It was decided? We were supposed to work together. 
and I hadn't even said anything yet. I tried not to let the disappointment show on my face. I had a feeling it'd be harder to work with Jack, but I couldn't say that. I didn't want to hurt his feelings or make Iris and Leah mad, so I nodded. Sounds good, I lied. Dun, dun, dun. See you tomorrow.